Welcome to Auditory Precision, and today we're going to be talking about auditory masking and a couple phenomenons that take place. So the first thing I want to talk about is a non-simultaneous masking, or temporal masking. And when this can take place, is I might have a very quick onset loud noise called a transient. And a transient noise in music would be like somebody hitting a snare drum or plucking a violin. But in real life, let's just say this is somebody dropping a dish. Now, if I'm at a restaurant, what can happen is this can mask out a lot of noise. So let's say this is my masking, my masking noise. And if somebody drops a dish and I have started to talk, the dropping of the dish can actually mask out what I said and you might never hear it. This is my target that has been masked by the transient noise. This phenomenon is called forward masking and this can actually take place up to 200 milliseconds. Now something more astonishing is backwards masking. This sound can actually mask out something that takes place right before it. So say a noise was heard right before this, you might have never have recognized this noise because the transient sound or our masking tone masks this out. This is called backwards masking and this can take place up to about 20 milliseconds. So because of a non-simultaneous masking, we can have a phenomenon called forward masking or backwards masking. So that brings us to simultaneous masking. And this is a little bit more common sense. If I'm at a party and I'm talking to a friend and say I'm at a regular volume, 65 decibels is where conversation usually takes place. What can happen is that somebody can start playing the stereo. And say the stereo starts off pretty low. I hear it, it's in the other room. Uh, you might strain to hear me, but you can understand what I'm saying. But say somebody comes in and they really turn up that radio. Uh, let's say to a loudness like a rock concert, which is usually at 120 decibels, where you should be wearing ear protection, by the way. But now all of a sudden, if I don't change the decibel of my voice and that stereo gets really loud, all of a sudden you'll be looking at me and, I... and then if somebody yells at him to turn down the stereo, you realize I was talking the whole time. I was completely masked out because of simultaneous masking. Now a really neat phenomenon is two-tone suppression, which is a type of masking. And what will take place is, say I'm sitting at a restaurant, I'm looking forward, and there's noise coming from over here, which is, um, say, somebody that I'm sitting with. I want to hear this. But over on this side, there's also children misbehaving in another booth. One tone will suppress the other, and this is called two-tone suppression. And the reason why this takes place is because the cochlea is, the basilar membrane of the cochlea is excited by both of these. Now, from the cochlea, through my brain stem to the auditory cortex, I can do something called selective auditory attention. And by utilizing a technique of bottlenecking where I can process one without processing the other, or at least better, to pay attention more to one sound, I have the ability to ignore one sound and pay attention to the other. Now, as somebody starts to have hearing loss, they can also develop some auditory pathway problems, or this is also called central hearing loss. And so what can happen here is that they've lost this ability. So going to a restaurant is very confusing for them. If I fit them with hearing aids, what can happen is since everything's bright and new, they like it, but now this is loud and so is this, so again, I'm still not hearing one more than the other. There is good news. Because of the plasticity of the brain, if somebody wears hearing aids and they wear them long enough, sometimes we can remap the brain to bring back some of these skills. So after a while, I'll start to gain back that selective auditory attention so I can start to pay attention to one noise more than the other. 